Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Okay, and if we are happy, let us open our Bibles in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 29 to 31. Let us read verse 29. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, says, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. And again, let us go and read in the book of Acts 2. Acts 2, verse 21. Anamoditir. Can I read? And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These same words are also written in the book of Jewel, chapter 2, verse 32. But Jewel, when it goes on, it says, And in Mount Zion and Jerusalem, deliverance shall come, or there will be deliverance. Hallelujah. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word and thank you for your revelations. Thank you for raising us up and thank you for speaking with us. Reveal your word unto us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have read a verse from a certain chapter where we hear about Paul and about Silas. And the person who was talking they were to them was the person who was guarding them or the one who was holding the keys to the prison. He was a warder of the prison. And this man was given authority to check on them. And the Bible says when they were there, they decided to start worshiping and to praise God. And as they were worshiping and praising God, there was an earthquake. The jail shook or the foundation of the jail shook. And when it was shaking, the doors opened on their own without a key. And the warder now saw or realized that the doors were opened. And he ran inside and he wanted to kill himself because he believed that if doors can be opened, people will walk out or will run out or they will go away. So it will be a debt unto him to bring them back into jail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I, just, I was just narrating the story where it comes from. But now here where we've read, we hear that the man went in. Why? Because he wanted to see if these two men were there. And when he went in, he found that Paul and Silas were there still seated with others. They didn't go out and run away. And now I believe maybe he asked others what was really happening and they told him these two were worshipping and they were praising God. That's the only thing we know. They were not sleeping. And what happened is that the prison foundation shook and the doors were opened. Hallelujah. Now the thing that this man asked from them is, what is it that I can do to be saved? I have entitled the message of today, you must be saved and keep your salvation. If you can look there, 
When you want to be saved, you must make a decision to be saved. You decide yourself that I want to, save, to be saved. If this prison warden didn't want to be saved, he might have just went there, closed again the doors and locked them. If they were still lockable. But what we are hearing, we are hearing that he asked them, what can I do to be saved? In other words, this man was ready to receive whatever Paul and Silas were having. Hallelujah. Now, when you become saved as a child of God, it is because there is something that you have heard. The only thing that you have to do is to respond. Or you want to know more. Salvation does not come to you when you don't do something. You must do something so that salvation must come. You must ans ask a question. You must make a decision so that salvation can come to you. Can someone say hallelujah? So now when we have read again, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. How we now wicha? Iina la morena jesu to puluswa. Come on, chairman, where you still have to make a decision. In other words, salvation is not free. The Bible says salvation is free. Yes, it is free, very much free. But when it comes to the issue of salvation coming to you, it is not free. You must take a decision. Can you ask the person that is close to you, did you take a decision? Now, if you can look at the salvation that we are in these days, I will tell you, many of us are not making a decision of becoming saved. Why do I say so? Because many of us, we are found in the house of the Lord, whereas we are not saved. We are there in the house of the Lord, but we are not saved. The Bible speaks about others who just went inside the sheepfold where as they are not ships. Come and jump away. The easy to throw shot there. Oh, kids are listening. Kajarata, the answer na kamunyako. Hallelujah. Now, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you make a decision of belonging into the kingdom of God. Now it means when you are belonging into the kingdom, it is no longer you who does things. There is somebody who does things for you. The one who have called you into the kingdom. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Jewel, the Bible says right there, when you become saved, in Mount Zion or in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. It means now when you become saved, also deliverance must come to you. Why deliverance? So that you can be able to sustain or keep your salvation. Can I repeat myself again? Yes, we can be saved every day. When altar call is being made, we run to the front and go in and say, I'm surrendering, I want to be saved. The problem is, if you haven't been delivered, you are not able to keep or to sustain your salvation. Why, Gauri, things of the past are still there ruling in you. When you take a decision of being saved, you must also take another decision of being delivered. Munaoki, the man that we, are, we have read about, the Bible said, after that when he was told, Paul and Silas shared the word of the Lord to him and his household. And all of them were saved because they believed. And they prayed for them. Now, this salvation that we are talking about, children of God, 
We can hear when Jesus is speaking about it in John chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And when you are safe, you will go out and go in and you will find pasture. Life won't be difficult the way it was because you'll be going out and in because you went in through the right door. So now, do you understand me when I say there are others who are saying they are saved but they didn't enter through the right door? Can you ask the person that is close to you, did you enter through the right door? When you enter through the right door, you become delivered. And when you are delivered, you will go in, what you are and do whatever that you are doing. And then Yesu Abolela, when Jesus is saying, he's saying, and you will find a pasture. What is it that this sentence, this one sentence that we have talked about is telling us? It means, don't mind my voice, sometimes it goes away. It means when you are not a sheep, that has entered through the gate. That is why even when you say you are saved, we will see you by your works, showing that you didn't enter by the gate. If you have entered by the gate, Jesus said, if you are of my father, you will not sin. I will receive So, Baba those who didn't enter through the gate, sometimes they go away and do shocking things. Why? Because they didn't enter through the right door. The only door that we can enter through when we come to salvation is Jesus Christ of Nazareth only. And there's nobody else. When we speak about salvation, we speak about something that has been started by Jesus Christ when he came to earth to die for our sins. He bought us with his blood. We didn't make him a favor. God made us a favor. If you can read in the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, all of us, we know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him must not perish but have everlasting life, isn't it? And it went on to 17 and said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him. I've stopped. Can I read again? God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him. Did you open it? Can you open it in your Bible, please? I want you to read it. Tabaye, this issue is telling us for you to come to Charis Missionary today, church today, does not mean you are saved. Mm. For you to be a daughter, a son of a pastor, does not mean you are saved. You have to make a decision. And when you make that decision, you enter through a door. And this door that you enter through is called Jesus. And when we read the Bible, is saying God loved us, me and you, that he sent his son to come and die for our sins at Calvary. And now it is saying again, when he sent this man, 
He didn't want to condemn the world. Nasanya ku latale fasi. Nasanya ku ruale fasi. Nasanya ku rile fasi le. But that the world through him. Kalo ona libatile. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Kalo ona libatile. Kupelo limpa lemo baibili nyali inori manchu ya ulatilari ingi. Hmm? Ingi? Ya ukaraba tuwa batu wa riba. Are you holding Bibles? Le chapa ubulela? I'm sorry because I love to do things so that we understand. Verse 18. No, 17. Right there in 17. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Might. Might. Mutomo Horauri. It means there are some who have entered and they are not saved because they didn't enter through the door. Bible through him they might. I can see what Bible has paid in answering Bible has paid. Through him they might. Be saved. Bakatabapuluswa. I was reading it in the Pedi Bible. Which Bible is Pedi? Kupelum palele manak. Ovane mudimu rad. Ovane mudimu morawa. Morawa kagwa kaka morumela le fasi ngore. Ale atule. Umu rumine ngore le fasi le pulusheki yen. Le pulusheki yena. So now, this issue is telling me and you, Puluso, foundation yayona, it's only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no other foundation of salvation except Jesus of Nazareth. You can come to church, you can go out of the church. The problem of you not being able to sustain your salvation is you didn't enter through the right door. That is why it is not even difficult for you to find yourself being out of salvation and on Sunday coming in to salvation. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close, do you enter in through the right door? When you enter through the right door in your life, when you enter through the right door, there is a change of speech. There is a change of doings. There is a change of character. There is a change of the way you walk. There is a change of many, many other things. And above all, there is erasure of all past things when you enter through the door. Are you hearing me? Now, when you enter through the door, and when all of these things has happened unto you, it then becomes difficult to you for you to find yourself going back into your past life. When you have to go back to your past life, you must go through the door again and go out. Uba, ufoche, utreka jara ata. Eh? Now, when you have entered through the door, that is why it becomes very much difficult that when you are really getting in through the right door, means... You have been saved indeed. Now when you are saved indeed, it becomes difficult for you to find yourself falling into sin. Why? I will tell you. Because that's the law of sin. 
Motimo ba ufile le litswalo. Conscious. Hmm? Ha o sare ke nyoko utswa. O ba le ntlongwe ya go bubutshisha hore. It ask you now when you are you want to take mama's jacket. How are you going to do it? And then because you didn't enter through the door, you entered through the window. That conscience goes down and you steal my jacket. And you say, no, nah. when they ask, I'm going to tell them why I took it. Or they will never see that I've taken the jacket. Are you hearing me? In other words, when we enter through the door, there are a lot of things that are destroyed in us. When we find ourselves going back into sin, it is because we entered through the window. Let me say the window. I think it will be better. Anger. Ritsenika le fenster. So harik le ka montong ya papa. When we are right here in the house of the Lord, when we are worshiping the Lord, when we are doing everything that is supposed to be done in the Lord, in you, it does not even take time to find yourself being out of glory and coming back into glory again. You can walk out of anointing and come back into anointing again. Today you are worshiping how it's beautiful, it's nice. You have raised your hand high up in the air. You said, God, you are so good. Next Sunday when you come to church, you are something else. When we ask you what's your problem, no, it's because I have something in my heart. My heart is heavy. It's easy for you. The window is opened. When you want to go out, you go out and go and sin. And when you come back, you want to come back. You just come back because you want and go on with worshiping again. I mean, are you hearing me? So now, this is what the Bible is telling us. Our church today is full of many liars, thieves, killers. Why? Because they entered through the window. I will give you a reason of why I say many thieves, killers, and all these kind of things. When you have entered through the door, the Bible says you will find pasture. The Bible says you will find everything that you are searching for. The Bible says you are going to be comforted. Your tears will be wide away. When we go there, when you reach there, you find brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers. Whenever you have something that you want to say, you can always go to somebody to ask if I'm doing the right or the wrong thing. But now, when you didn't get inside through the right door, and you got inside through the window, your character is different. You don't think, do things the way we do them. You do things the way you want to do them. You don't do things the way Christ wants you to do them. You do things the way you want to do. Why did I give this message a topic of salvation and keep your salvation? Many of us here, yes, we have been saved one day. An altar call was called one day. But after being called for altar call and we went to the front and lift our hands up to the air and said we are becoming born again. Another time we found ourselves being out of the grace of God. That is why you find in our churches there is no more stability. Who are these people that I say, but I'm sorry, but I have to say this. We go to church because these days when we go there, we want to be healed. We want money. We want to prosper. We want to have one, two, three. 
These days when we go to the church of God, we are not going there for salvation and to build up our lifestyle in Christ. We are there because we want to have a job. We are there because we want to have money. We are there because we have heard people are being prayed for and they buy cars. We are going there because we've heard that if you can go there when you are a brother and you are not married, you will find beautiful girls in the church. We go there because if you are a lady, you'll find a handsome man in the church and we will get married. That is why after being married or after getting what you have gotten from the house of the Lord, you forgot who gave you whatever you are having. Are you hearing me? That is why these days we have a lot of backsliders in the church of God. Because we didn't enter through the door, we entered through the window. You never surrendered and made a decision of saying, I am following Jesus. If you can make that decision of saying, I'm following Jesus, you will never turn away along the road and say, I'm tired of following. Why? Because this Jesus is always taking care of you each and every day. I was in Secunda, Pastor Robert is here. I asked them, I said, how did it come that you woke up this morning? Can somebody tell me how he or she woke up this morning? How did you wake up? It's by the grace of God. There's nobody in this house at lunch that can explain to me what they are saying. Oh, thank God. This is what I say every day. Thank God I'm still breathing. I'm still alive. When I wake up every morning. Why? Because I don't know that which makes me to sleep. And that which makes me to wake up every morning. It is not because I am wise. Mm -mm. It is not because I am better. No. But there is somebody who's always monitoring my soul. And now he says, time, this person must wake up. You cannot even explain it. It doesn't have an explanation. Now, when you have entered through the door, this God that has made Jesus to come to earth to die for us, make sure that everything goes well with you. When things are taking time in your life, it is because he's still preparing something. When things are not coming to you, it is because he's still penal beating you. When things are not working out in your life, it is because he's still preparing a beautiful something for you. Why? Because when people are going to see whatever you have received from God, they must say, wow. This is all about salvation. Mudimari pulusha. If you can read nicely, Mudimu ratilele fasi hakaka. When God was seated in heaven, he looked down, he saw you and me and others. Going with our own beliefs and whatever we desired. And we were not doing the right thing. And he said, how can I buy these people back? And he said, I must do something. Why? Because he loved us so much. Can you tell the person that is close to you, God loved you so much. You were not supposed to come in through the window. You were supposed to have got inside through the door. Because you are coming, coming home to your own father. You are coming home, coming home to your own creator. You are coming home to your own father in heaven, your own God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now when we start to enter through windows... The explanation of Christianity does not have its full meaning anymore. Puluso Aisena Siemo. 
Poloso Aisa le botokwa re no mane re ba re ya ka hore ka sonta ona ntwe re diang have you ever seen a christian who is empty who didn't enter through the door let me give you examples those christians are forever complaining Those Christians are forever talking about others. Those Christians are forever speaking about how bad people in the church are. Those people are forever criticizing everybody. You know why? When they entered through the window, they never got delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, did you get your deliverance when you enter? I can only say, dear one, get the delivery. No more, you are out, out. When you get inside the window, the 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 door, Jesus will buy you. Mimo la mnyako. Hmm. You know, we're in gas. Chono idir. Tendo kam. When, when, when Tendo is getting in, I am the door. I am Jesus. So, come and pass. 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 Come and I am the door. When you are standing at my back, you have to walk through me. Eh? You have to walk through me and then you go forward. Why? And you go wherever you are going. Now when you enter through the window, there is nothing that you go through. That is why you are not when you enter through me, through the door, immediately when you enter through me, ukwata wa sipila, ungala wa tamaya, siringi ingidi ya sipila, utawabu ya tuwa kaofe. Why? Because you walked through the door. That is why Paul, when he says this, he said, it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Kaore mutola ure la asena, Hats and a fit like a crest, crest the woods any amoa pesha at one anali crest the car. In other words, the Christ that we are talking about, half a lady doesn't get over that perfume. If I can call it perfume, is always there since those years ago, it is still working even today. Now, if you didn't enter through the door. And you entered through the window. You don't have that perfume. That is why Mama Lodi, I don't know how fit I can do this. And I didn't see you. Maybe I was thinking about something. But just because I didn't greet you, you are angry. Mama Lodi has got her own people. She greets her own kind of people. It's not so. You didn't enter through the door. Because if you have entered through the door, all those things that you are having would have been left with Jesus at Calvary. All these things, they were supposed to be at Calvary right now. You were supposed to be saying, I am a free man. Because everything was left with Christ. Now you are living a new life. You are living a life with joy and splendor. You are living a life that is good for you to live. Now when you are living, having entered through the door, you start to become a person who is different with the people of the world. 
Can you say hallelujah? Many people that we are living with today are not different with the world. That is why you still find the sin, see we, still abundant in the house of God. Am I? If you have entered through that door, not Jesus, when you are here, you are under the grace of charis. I'm telling the right thing, isn't it? Now, when you are here, in us, that is why I don't know why God gave me this message but I understand it was because of his own purpose hmm? that's why I don't know why God gave me this message can you ask the person that, that is close to you, didn't you enter through the window? Why do you become so angry so quickly? Eh? Why do you do these kind of things you are doing? You entered through the window. Huh? When you are still asking Muzalwani, Kitabuche, Yaupulusa, Pudisha, I will ask these good questions. When you are asked a Christian, why are you not giving in the house of the Lord? Why are you not tithing though you are working? Budget. Eh? Why are you not worshipping while other people are worshipping? Tired. In everything that you do, when you are asked, you have a reason. Why? Because you have entered through the window. Can we get out through the window again today and we enter through the door today? Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that, it, that is close to you, can you enter through the door today, please? Because we want you to be delivered also, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, what is it that we can do? I have explained everything about being saved, entering through the door. What is it that we have to do? I said the heading is saved and keep your salvation. We become saved most of the time, but we cannot keep our salvation. And we come back again. We come back again. We come back again. We come back again. We come I again. We come into the house of the Lord. Why? Because in the house of the Lord, there is this where my life is. There is no way I depend, I depend to be in the house of the Lord. When I'm in the house of the Lord, everything is possible and good about me. So now what do we do to keep the salvation? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you able to keep your salvation? Ask again. And I ask this difficult question. How many times have you fallen? 20 times, isn't it? Or 100. Okay, let's go on. Now in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 6 verse 33. The issue of the door is found in John chapter 10, verse 9. 
I believe I didn't tell you. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the Bible says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. How do I go about it, pastor? When you reach inside, when you have entered through the gate, through the door. How fitakahari nyaka muso. Seek the kingdom. Find knowledge about the kingdom. Nyaka utziva rudiala ankara muso. When you reach there inside, you find people. Children of God that have been there for a very long time, maybe. Now, maybe there is something that is happening that you don't understand. You go and ask, now, what is it that is happening to this one? What's going on? Why? Because you don't understand anything about the kingdom of God, isn't it? Now, when you want to understand the things of the kingdom, you must be able to go about his commandments. When we go inside, when we are inside the kingdom, inside the church, we no longer do things according to his commandments. We want to do things according to our own understanding and knowledge. When you reach inside the house of God, it is no longer you who is living and doing things. It's Christ who is doing things. When we are here in the house of the Lord, we are led by the Spirit of God. When we are here in the, Spirit of the, in the house of the Lord, it is the Spirit of the Lord who speaks through us and speaks to you. Directs you. Tell you what to do and what not to do. Tell you where to go and where not to go. You don't do things on your own. You do things according to the laws of the kingdom. My children know. Even this one who's married, she knows. When six o'clock strikes and I didn't see her, I call. What's your problem? Where are you? What are you doing? And sometimes she will say, Mara, Mama, I'm hearing that I'm understanding she's telling. But now I'm married. Even though you are married, you are still my daughter. I must know. That's what I do. I'm used to it. Are you understanding me? It's a law that I have established in me. Why? Because I am in a Satan kingdom. Now, when we are in the church of God, we are in the kingdom. Here in the kingdom, there are rules that we have to follow. We don't do things according to our own understanding. We don't do things because we want to do them. We don't do things because our friends are telling us we must do one, two, three. We do things because it is allowed to do them in the kingdom. How is it not sense? License. You can never drive a car. Even though you are able to drive it It is not an issue of you can drive It is an issue of Do you have the papers pertaining driving When you go to buy a car in the garage They want some papers To show that you are indeed legitimate in South Africa They will want to put a proof of address They'll want ID. They'll want bank statements. They'll want what? They'll want what? Why? So that they can know. Or this person that we are selling this car to is right to have this kind of a car. Now also in this kingdom where we have entered, there are laws that we have to follow. 
There are things that we have to do and things that we are not supposed to do. There are things that we have to follow so that we can be able to maintain the salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, maintain your salvation. In James chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. That's how I did it down. I will just speak about it. It says, therefore, submit to God. Some at home, submit. Go with him to learn how he submit. Mujenga will literally submit. The first thing you have to do is to submit. When you enter into the kingdom, when you reach there, you don't know anything about the kingdom. The first thing you have to do is to submit. So that you can have knowledge of what's happening in the kingdom. If you don't know, you don't submit, you'll never know anything. You cannot enter here into cherries. I've been here for whatever years and utamabani mona pile u nyoko bamruti piliak. You must first sit down, isn't it? Eh? You must submit. And the Bible goes on and said, resist the devil. Resist the evil one. When you have submitted, you must also be able to, to resist. I have spoken before, I said, when you have entered through the window, things haven't been taken out of you. But when you enter through the door, there are things that will leave you because you will be walking through Christ. Then the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And nature Satan. When you ever enter to the door, when the devil comes, you are able to say one, two, finish. No. When your friend comes to you, <laughs> when your friend comes to, <laughs> to, come to you and say, Let's go and do this, this, you say, eh, listen, brother. I cannot do that, my friend. I love you. I cannot do that, oh. Because that thing is no longer in me, it's gone. I cannot do what you're asking me again. Because I've been transformed by Christ when I entered through that door. Those things of the earth are no longer in me. Now I am a new creature. I live according to the laws of the kingdom. I cannot sin again. I cannot do one, two, three again, oh. And you resist the devil. And the Bible says immediately you resist. He does what? He ran. advantage. If you can resist him, you will run. Can you ask the person that is close to you, have you ever resisted the devil? nature. Others are not able to say no because that's the word of Roto with their feet. Others are not able to say no because they know they won't be given a lift anymore. Others are not able to say no because they want to be part of the group. They want to be part of the class. They want to be part of they want to belong somewhere. Are you hearing me? For you not to be able to resist the devil is because you want to belong. So now you cannot cry to belong to a certain group when you know you belong to the kingdom. 
You cannot cry to fall into a certain group when you know that you fall in the kingdom. In the kingdom, God has loved us with such great love. We are all the same. When we are in the kingdom of God, God sees us as people who are equal, even though we are different, but the grace is the same. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. And he says, draw near to God. That's number three. We are trying to keep the salvation. And he will draw near to you. The more he, you run away is the more he also runs away. He becomes somebody that is very far from you. That's why he says, even when we go to pray, God cannot hear our prayers because we are very far. The Bible says, let us come closer. Tell somebody that is close to you, come closer. And God will come close to you. When you go far, God cannot hear you. That is why the Bible says, Mudimubari, when you offer your prayers, I will close my face. Kerata speed is wrong. Sare kauri di tapelo chale na ki manyala. They are abomination. Hmm? So now, the thing that we have to do as children to maintain our salvation, let us go closer. Let us draw near to God. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Then it says, number four, cleanse your hands. Papa Mazo. Shweki Samazo. You sinners, cleanse your hands. Why does the Bible says hands? Kauri matsoa kio na charangilo jadi ngata. Jadi wenga stalus. Our hands are the ones that hold a lot of things. When you want to drink beer, how do you drink it? Glass, hand. When you want to smoke, how do you do it? Cigarette, hand. Uh -huh. When you want to go and jol around, how do you do it? Hands. Matsuari na analitichi. I'm sorry. I'm trying to say what God has told me to say, isn't it? Matsuari na analitichi. That is why the Bible says we must cleanse our hands. You take a decision by your hand, by the hands, uh, by your head, your brain. But the thing that is going to make the job is your hands. Uh, if you can look, maybe 95, 96% of things that are done are done by the hands. Legs are for walking only and kicking. Am I right? But the hands are the ones that does a lot of things. So the Bible says, you sinners, cleanse your hands. Tabang mato, shweki sang mato alina. Urlita li khono ubulu ka pulu soya lina. So that you can be able to sustain your salvation. So that you can be able to keep your salvation. We fall down many a times, Christians, because of little, little things. Things that we don't even think about. They are the ones that are taking us out of the love of God. Out of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Are you still there? And it goes on and says, purify your hearts, you double-minded people. 
batho ba pelutse pedi ga me gopolo ya mebedi can you purify your hearts tell yourself i am a child of god and i belong in the house of the lord and whatever that i'm going to do it will be for the glory of the lord amen things are tough yes i can see things are tough my way things are not going the way i thought they will go but i'm not going anywhere i'm going to stay in the house of the lord until he appears and until he answers me amen you know i'm not getting a job people are being prayed for what you have to do is to inspect yourself and say i'm not going anywhere i am going to sit down and i'm going to do what god is telling me to do and from there i'm going to wait upon the lord because god is never early or late god does not change like man is does not lie i will stay until he answers amen modimo e sa le ke o hweditse o bile o mo botse mo go nna o mphile bophilo ke sa phila le lekgono jo nong ke tatula ke o khomaretse nka soe ke o tugaetse ke tatula le wena o isa ka o sa feeling amen mara le ngwa dilo tshe ke dibolelang it's when you have made a decision of belonging in the kingdom of god people can say what they say they do what they do i will stay in the kingdom i will never think about anything else Now if you can think yourself like me when I think myself I can never leave the house of God because I know where he took me Even if you can come and speak a beautiful wonderful story about somewhere where 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 I, I'm not going there I am staying where I am until God answers me Why because I have seen the grace of God in this God I have seen his mercy. I have seen his righteousness. I have seen his love. I have seen all the things that he has done for me. Now I cannot just move because I heard that. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you don't have two minds you will fall. The last one says humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Nko yi kokobetse bless for to somebody. And the Bible says he will lift you up. Yena odim. There is a difference of being lifted up by people and being lifted up by God. There is a different when people praise you and gives you names and a go when God erases you and put you in a certain place. Kaori, the different is where people has placed you they can come tomorrow and take you down. But where God has placed you nobody will take you down until when you decide you want to go down. Are you hearing me? Now when God lifts you up because of your humble spirit, nobody can put you down. When God has taken you up because you want to serve him faithfully, nobody can say whatever and make God to change his mind. You will always stay there, stay there where you are because mudimuki e na u beileng, God is the one who placed you there. Are you hearing me? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you humbling yourself? Why kokobetsa na ngwana bo mma? Ha wi kokobetsa mo dimo tla o thathusa o ta o phamisa. When you humble yourself, God will take you to the next level. When you are humbling yourself, you will never stay in one place for a very long time. When now got the bona you can see yourself like you are in the same place can't you know you are going up bit by bit It is just a matter of time when somebody and everybody recognizes that you have gone up already Hallelujah Hallelujah Now in the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 8 verse 18 it says 
Whoever is born of God does not sin. He keeps himself. Or the wicked one must not touch him. The evil one must not touch him. When you are in the kingdom doing all these things, humbling yourself, purifying yourself, the evil one will never touch you. Why do people fall from their salvation? The evil one comes and touch them. When we pray for you, we touch you, isn't it? I will come and put my hand on top of your head and say, God bless you. Now, when the devil wants to bring you down also, he comes and touch you. What's he What's he What's he he sent his own to come and touch you. And when he touches you, then you go down. You fall from where you were standing. Now when you don't run to sin, the devil will never be close to you. You will always be a daughter, a son of the kingdom. When you don't go away of the way of God, you will never Slide away from the kingdom. Why? Because you know the person who made you to be in the kingdom. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now in Ephesians 6 chapter 11, I want to finish. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We'll go and read going down through it. How do you put on the whole armor of God? Read the Bible. Come to the house of the Lord. Fellowship with others. Don't do your things alone because you will be lost. You will do things in the wrong way, isn't it? Hallelujah. When you are in the house of the Lord, the Lord takes care of you. All these things, so when you are doing them, you will be trying to sustain your salvation. When you humble yourself, when you purify, when you cleanse, you know, when you, the book of the law stays in you, you read the Bible, you fellowship, you are always with children of God, you are trying to keep your salvation. If you are not doing these things, let me just give you an example that is so beautiful. Somebody will come to you and say, don't give in the house of the Lord. And you say, why? Because these people are eating your money. And when I will say, yeah, yeah, now I can see. Let me tell you, you have already fallen from the grace. Why? Because you don't know. We give because we love God. Why do we love God? Because he loved us at first. Why did he love us at first? Because he saw us, he created us, and now we were going away, we were waiting away, going away from his love. Going away from his loss. Going away from his church. Now he wanted a way to bring us back. Then he sent his son to us. Now, because we love him, we do whatever he wants us to do. When Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden, this is what God said to him. Adam, and then Tate Adam, you can eat of all. Huh? Everything. But... But you can do everything you want to do, but everything that is written in the Bible that is saying don't, don't.
everything that is written in the Bible that is saying, do this, do. I usually call, say, when you are a Christian, you become stupid. And you will then ask me, Mama, how stupid? Why? Because you do things that you don't see. You do things that you believe in. By will. Can you ask the person that is close to you, this book, the commandments, the laws, are you following them? The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mr. Satan, when the devil comes to tempt you, he won't find you because the word of God. The word of God. You know how to run away. You know how to attack the devil. When he comes to attack you, you attack him back. When he comes to tell you whatever, you tell him something. And I spoke with a little girl and I was saying, do you know where you are coming from? Do you know where God took you? If you know all these things that I'm asking you, you will hold on to Jesus. You will never leave him. I don't have a plan for your life. God has a plan for you. I don't know where you are going. Even if I'm a prophet, I might be knowing that you are a pastor because you are pastors. But your plan and where you are going, I don't know. I can just prophesy and say, where we are going, hey, Pastor Ziclod, your ministry will be big. <laughs> That's what I will say, isn't it? But God himself is the one who knows how big it's going to be. And he knows again at what time this ministry is going to be big. Because he's monitoring whatever you are doing. And now when the time comes, he'll say, now my daughter is right. I can take him there. Do you know how you come faster? You come faster. You come faster. You come Oh, nana. And you see, you come faster. You come faster. Do you know that others here, God is regretting why he called us? Do you know that? If God regretted and he spoke about Saul, it means he's also regretting about us. Why, Mara, did I choose Eunice? I choose Eunice. You know, God is saying, they are up in heaven and say, Mara, this woman, did I send her to speak these things? Why is he speaking about all this uh, nonsense? And then Nakamoki Abulela, yeah. I will tell you your address, your phone number. Call the Khalidi phone number in the CEO. Huh? I get it wrong, Anker. Please understand me. I'm just giving an example. Khalene di CEO. This time, this time, this time, tomorrow, there will be plenty of food. That's what they used to say. This time, next year, this and this will be happening. And next year we see those things happening. The Bible says the prophets of all didn't just go out without God having spoken to them. They wait for God to give them a word. And when God has given them a word, they went out. And they called all Israel. Are you Israel? This is what God is saying. One, two, three, and one, two, three. And the Bible is reading. Those prophets, God never allowed their words to fall down. Why? Because the law, they were holding the law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were wearing the right clothes. I didn't want to read the whole of what was said there. 
because I was afraid I will take a lot of time. But if you can reach home today and read it, I believe it's going to help you, isn't it? In the book of Ephesians 11. Go and read it today. It speaks about head, about feet, about chest. You know, about all these things, then you'll start to understand. It means I have to behave in a different way. Are you hearing me? Now, all these things that we have spoken today, let us just go, just write it down. The book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. <coughs> Can you tell the person that is close to you, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You must meditate upon it day and night so that you can be able to do according to what is written in it. Why will you say that 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 you say you don't understand anything because you don't have the book of law. When you have the book of law with you, you will never be lost. You will preserve your salvation. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, preserve your salvation. So that you don't fall back again. So that you don't slide back again. To start afresh is very painful. Very, very painful. It's better for us to go forward than to fall back or to slide back or to start from the beginning each and every day. Then in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, I'm finishing. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to ever apprehended, but one thing I do One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. When you are in the kingdom, you must forget. And you reach out for the things that are forward. You forget what happened two years, three years, five years, 20 years ago. And you reach out for things that are yet to come. When we are saved, there are a lot of promises that God has given unto us that they will come to pass in our lives. But all those things that have been written can come to pass in our lives when we are able to forget those things that are behind us because we have entered through the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must be able to forget things of the past. Now as I close, when I finish, let me say to you, as we are saved as children of God, let us not fail to maintain our salvation. Because during the last day, the last hours, we will be ashamed when we find ourselves in the same place with those that we usually call them sinners. Why? Because of failing along the road and falling back. When you are a Christian, you must be able to leave Upila. Usinasibi. Uskalikean. Don't be tempted. Lead a sinful life. Tao ya sibi chamela hulaliona. Seek the face of God always. Follow the word of God always. 
and do his commanded as he has spoken. Are you hearing me? Can I repeat them? Lead a, sinful, a sinless a life without sin. The nature of sin is not there in you. Seek the face of God. Seek him day in and day out and follow his word. You can never make it in salvation when you don't study the word of God. And you can never make it in heaven when your salvation is based on the knowledge of other people. When there is something you don't understand, you go to ask somebody, go and ask, you know what, I wanted to know about faith, where can I go and read? If the person knows, we'll tell you the verses. Go where, 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 where you'll find the Bible speaking about faith. Then you will understand what faith is. Okay, I'm struggling, I'm having this problem. Where can I find it in the Bible? Or you sit down yourself, you study the word of God. The word of God must live in us. The word of God builds up our character. And the word of God again build up our conscience. That is why doing sin or living a life of sin will be very much difficult for us. Why? Because our conscience is so builded up. We are even afraid to lie or to kiss somebody. Why? Because in you who the word of God is living in you. And the last thing is, do his commandments. Do his commandments. Follow him. Be a stupid by following God. And God one day is going to award you. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you nourishing your salvation? Are you keeping your salvation? Are you taking care of your salvation? Or you have fallen already? <laughs>